<coughs> Hello, welcome people. Hello, peeps. Welcome to Sunday Comic Investment Chat. Beautiful day here in Sarasota. As you can see, I got the blinds open. The sun is shining and it is getting a little bit cooler. Yes, summer has been hot and brutal and humid, but that's expected in Florida, right? But now that we are midway, time flies, okay? Midway through September already, yeah. My son has been back in school for a month now. Can you believe it? School start mid-August down here in Florida. Hello, Airman. You notice I finally put up the art that was given to me, gosh, two months ago. Uh, by Woody Warren, his son, his teenage son, drew that Wolverine. So I finally decided to put up right there. I need to round up with one more something there. I have an idea of what piece of art I want to put back there just to match it like original art. Uh, I want to put another piece of original sketch back there. And then something down here just to round out the background. Hello, go school. Uh, long week. I had. I was. The last month have been pretty busy for me as far as work. Yes, I actually had projects that I got to get done on my business. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I am about ninety percent, ninety five percent done with the project. So. It is sitting here waiting for a phone call tomorrow with the attorneys just to clarify on how they want things finalized. And then I am done, officially done with both projects. And then I can enjoy the rest of the, the year. I don't know. You know, with my business, it's hard to tell. I, I, I made enough money with my business for this year. Okay, I already earned enough, so I can do nothing for the rest of the year. Hello, Dr. Vanchilla. Hello, John. Um, so today is, uh, let's see, well, it's comic investment chat, so let's talk a little bit about investment and comic books. One of the things that is common for people in the investment trading investment area that you hear often we are very well versed in the saying sell on the news yes sell on the news it is something that very common it happened all the time almost i would say a hundred percent of the time but often when good news are being talked about about a company you will see the stock of that company go up and up and up and up days and weeks and months before the news is out. For example, let's go to last week, Apple. Apple have their yearly yearly product launch. And of course, prior to that day, Apple stock was running higher and higher and higher and higher, right? Because people anticipate, that's the key word, anticipate uh, pro new products, exciting news, cool gadgets. Uh, and it's, it's clockwork, it's clockwork on the day that the product is announced and Apple had the big, you know, a big day where they have a big event big stage, the stock went down. Duh. Okay, it's a big duh. <laughs> For those that are trading Apple stock, you have to sit back and say duh. Okay, because anyone that bought Apple on the way up and didn't get out when the news is out and see the stock go down and has a head scratching moment like, what happened? I thought, 
I thought the, the new product, the new iPhone, the new iWatch uh, is gonna blow up, and they're gonna they announce new streaming service, and they're gonna what happened? What do you think happened? Because sell on the news, it's as old as. Gosh, I'm not sure when that saying came out, but I'm pretty sure it's been around for decades. Okay, sell on the news. It's been out for decades. So, breaking news is not news. <laughs> you know, sell on the news is not news. Okay, it's 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 been around for decades, and it's always head scratching to me to see traders or investors buying in, into the hype of a product launch. All the time. I mean, it's just like it's like clockwork. It's it's almost like take money, take candies from a baby. It is so obvious for those that are watching and participating in the stock market for a few years. You don't you don't have to even be in the in the market for decades to know this trend. If you play in a stock market for a year or two, you probably have seen this scenario played out dozens of times. You should not be surprised. Hello, comic crack. Hello, Terrence. So it is, you know, not news, and and a lot of that is very similar to the comic hobby. You know, we, we I'm sure we are. All those that are listening to this probably are aware of how many hot books get cold once the movie is out. Okay, sell on the news. That's also applied to hot books, hot specs, hot anything that had to do with the movies. When the movie is out, you better be out. the 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 easy money. Has been made. Okay, if you are buying hot spec, hoping to cash out, cash in on a big gain because of the hotness of the movie, well, guess what? You better sell when the trailers are out. You better do it. Okay, it 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 is so obvious by now. I harp on this on many videos. On many chats, on some video that answers a specific question like when is it a good time to sell? The good time to sell is when the movie. Well, by the time if you wait until you know the the news come out that oh you know today is the premiere of Captain Marvel the movie. But if you wait until the premiere of the movie, you are already late. If you're lucky, there is one last chance on that day as the people get hyped up on the movie. As the news come out that the movie has broken all kind of record on opening day, that is it. That is your last offering from the lemmings to get the f out and cash in and be happy. Just like Apple event, Apple when Apple event um, open, the stock did not go down from the opening of the main event at Apple. Okay, it there are moments during the events that the stock probably went up. I did not look. Okay, I did not look at every single tick, every single trade that happened with Apple on the day, but I can guarantee you, there has there were, as always, moments during that time that some people got out higher than where the stock closes on that day. So, you know, it, it's I said this many times on my channel: buying is easy. Selling is hard. Selling is very hard. It requires discipline. It requires you to do something that is against what you are. You are a collectors. We are collectors. We are hoarders. We are a lot of things. 
even for flippers, I can assure you, even for flippers, even for traders that are used to selling, it is not easy. It requires discipline. It requires reminding yourself on a daily basis that it's time to get the F out. Okay, it's not about I love this so much. I love Apple so much. I use all their products. I'm not gonna trade Apple. I'm gonna hold on to it. Some people will disagree. Some people say I bought and own Apple for the last twenty years and make a hundred times of my money. Well, if you're a good trader and you get in and out of Apple multiple times a year, you probably make. 10 times more money, okay? There's no, it's nothing wrong with buying and holding Apple stocks over the past 10 years. There's nothing wrong with that. But there are also very good traders out there that have made multiple times the money on Apple by trading it, okay? That's the same. I'm not one of those. I'm not a good trader with Apple. There are stocks that I'm pretty good at trading, and Apple is one of those that I'm not good at, okay? I own some Apple share, and that's it. Not a lot, a few shares here and there for my son' um, college accounts, and that's it. Uh, hello, comic addiction. Uh, <laughs> Terrence have a question. When is it? Th when is the right time to sell his brother Voodoo uh, slab? Well, Terrence, right now is too early unless you have multiple copies. I have three copies, okay, three. And one is at C, uh, at Comic Link right now for the September auction. But I still have two. So am I early on the three? Sure. But I'm okay with letting go of one copy because it is used for my Path to a Key series. If I bought that book to flip without using it <coughs> for my Path to a Key, I probably, I probably would hold on to it for another few months. But because for the sake of the series, I'm okay to let it go now and forego potentially another 30, 50% gain on that book. But that's okay. I have two other copies. Okay, I can be greedy with the other two copies. So it's all right. It's just like, uh, you know, with stocks. I have said this many times before. As a trader of stocks, I never, well, I would say never. I rarely blow out a position all at once. Let's say I own, let's say if I bought 100 share of Apple 10 years ago. And a stock had went up 10 10,000%. Most likely, I would sell in four to five times. Okay, I might sell 20 share here, 20 share there. You keep going higher, another 20 share there. That's what I do. That's what I did with Disney. I own a lot of Disney stocks for many years, but then I keep selling along the way up. And my last sales, my last sales of all of my Disney share was 141 a few weeks back. The stock has not, the stock went higher than 141. I think the, the, the highest it went after I sold out of everything was like 143 or maybe a little bit higher. And I remember telling my wife and son that I sold out of every Disney share that I have ever owned at 141 finally. After years of selling, I start to sell at 120, and then a little bit at 130, and then finally at 141. And my, my son was just like, oh my God, you know, you, you're going to miss out. And I'm just like, the stock is, for the last three weeks, the stock has been around 135 to 138. Uh, now, uh, I'm okay with letting go of all my Disney share for now. Yes, Terrence, if you have one copy, I would say hold on to it because right now it's pure, pure hypes 
well, rumors. I won't say hype. Right now, it's more rumors than actual uh, facts as far as brother voodoo in anything. Just like, okay, here's an example, Terrence, that you can use. I have four copies of Werewolf by Night 32. Yes, I said four. Hate me if you must. <laughs> I consign one copy this month to Comic Link because the news is out. He is in a TV show. I'm not going to blow out all four copies. But the first one was sent along with Brother Voodoo first appearance to Comic Link last week. That means I have three copies left. And guess what? I will hold on to them until closing time to the mo- the, the TV show. Whenever, As soon as the first trailer of the TV show, The Moon Knight, come out, I guarantee you that second book is going out. When will the third book go out? I guarantee you when the show launch. The day of that, okay? I'm not, I might even sell it the day before, but I'm not holding on to the third copy when the show launch on Disney+. Plus. It is going to be gone, gone, gone. And then the fourth copy is mine to keep to enjoy. You know, it's, that's, that's how I approach, okay? So if you have, for those that are listening or watching this, chat if you have three or four copy of something that's my path okay that's my plan on how i'm gonna get rid of three of my four werewolf by night when the show launch regardless of how awesome it's gonna be i will have one just one to use and to to, to enjoy i i don't need to have the other three copies Okay, uh, let's see. I'm checking. I'm looking at it's ten twenty six. So I've been talking for twenty minutes already. Already one third of the time is gone. How long ago did I buy the Werewolf by Night? Um, one was this year. Uh, one was one was this year. Two was last year, and one I had long before. Um, I also had um, a nice high-grade copy in a slab that I sold uh, early last year. I sold a a nice copy last year for a lot less. Uh, Actually, I had two. I, I took it back. I had two slab. I own many copies of that book, okay? The most I have ever owned at one time is four. Right now is f- the most. But if you ask me two years ago, I probably had three copies. One was a 9.0 um, that I sold for, well, it was a good price, okay? I'm not going to complain that I sold it, you know, for a good price for what it was. Sure, if I hold on to it today, you know, I would have probably doubled the profit on that, but that's not how I look at things. I don't look at things and say, gee, you know, I bought something and I sold it two years ago, and I, if I hold on to it, I could have doubled my money. I do not, do not look at things that way. You know why? Have you seen my path to a key where I literally quadrupled my money in six months? So I don't care, okay? As a trader, as a flipper, seeing something double in three years is not something I'm like, woo, no. I can do better. I have done better. It's not bragging, it's facts. Um... Iconic point asks, uh, what grade of Fantastic Four 48 do you think someone should invest in? Um, now, this go back to my, you know, one of my video on, um, you know, a lot of people, 
always ask me, should I buy this now? What price would I pay? And this apply if you have seen that video, then you know what's about to be my answer. Every book is a potential buy for me when it is the right price. Okay, I don't care what's going to happen with Galactus. If somebody offering me, if I see a chance to buy Fantastic Four 48, 30% below fair market value, right now, I would buy it. Would I pay fair market value for Fantastic Four 48 right now? The answer is no. It would be no last month. It would be no last year. It would be no five years ago. It would be no forever. Okay? This is not... ETA Nick is not buying many things at fair market value. I don't. Okay? So, uh, it, it's, 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 it's in my brain that I am going to buy and sell comic books, use a profit to buy books that I really want. And for the most part, I have been doing quite well doing that over the past many years, and I will keep doing that. You know, So for me, it is really hard to tell anyone what is the right price to pay for anything as a long-term investment because many of my keepers are bought with house money. Okay, if, if you haven't watched my channel, recently I sold a Daredevil 1. I bought a Daredevil 1 8.0 in a slab, and I sold it. Uh, I auctioned it at Comic Link for twice what I paid for. I bought the Daredevil 1 many years ago. Okay, so it's not like I bought a slab and I was able to flip it for twice the money. No, I'm not saying that. I bought the Daredevil one many years ago and I sold it on Comic Link two months ago. More than double my money. And I used a portion of the profit to buy a nice raw mid-grade copy. House money. Okay, so I don't really care what happened to Daredevil. I couldn't care less if Daredevil is going to return to the MCU or what happened to that book. I'm happy to have a copy for my collection. It's bought with house money, free. So that's how I approach my collection. Okay, I can't say enough about how often I do this. Does not matter if it's X-Men 1, Fantastic Four 1, it's all from profit okay it's I can tell you a lot of my books are in house money um, BTC moon guy say just bought an FF 48 for 150 bad spine roll you can fix that I'm sure if you uh, 150 seemed like a very good price assuming that the book is not 1.0, okay? If, if the book is a 2.0, you might do okay, right? Well, that, that, the hardest thing about trying to evaluate if something is a deal or not with comic books, it has to be re relative to the grade, right? So I can only hope that that 150 is at least... A 2.0, right? At least. Kleisin Ehrman said, do I do pressing and cleaning in submission for other people? The answer is very select few. I have clean and press for a very few select people. Very few. I can count them in my one hand. Um, you know, and you hear me talk a lot about, you know, buying things with house money. Sure, not everything that I have in my collection is house money, okay? Let's, <laughs> I'm not going to be 
lying about saying, oh, yeah, I bought my action one with house money. No, I did not. Okay. Uh, but I can say, you know, the majority of my Silver Age Marvel keys are house money because I have sold many of my books for very good profit. It's like, you know, like X Men 1. You know, I sold a lot of, I have two X Men 1 in higher grade in slab that I sold. So buying a 4.0, 5.0 raw copy was house money, you know. Um, but yeah, it's it can be done. You know, the, the whole reason for me to do the Path to a Key series is to show people that it can be done, okay? I don't need, in fact, I have talked about this many times on my channel. I don't show a fraction, I barely show a fraction of what I buy to sell. Because to me, what's the point of doing a haul video showing you a stack of books that's going to be gone from my collection within days? You know, as, as fast as they come in, they go to CGC after I clean and press them, and they go to Comic Link, and they're gone. So do I need more contents? Do I need to be bragging every week? There are other people on YouTube that can do their weekly haul and show off 80 books. That's fine. They can do that. I don't need to do that. Um, but my path to a key series is mainly to show people that want to own big books and wonder how the heck they are going to get there because they don't have the money. A lot of people are like that. So what I did, the whole purpose of Path to a Key was to show you, okay, I'm going to start out with like, you know, maybe 500 bucks, something in the realm of possibility for a lot of people. Even for, for some people, 500 bucks might be out of their budget. Okay, I'm not saying that I can cover every basis, but I start out with roughly 500 bucks, and I'm going to buy a bunch of books. I'm going to flip it. A year from now, that 500 bucks could turn into $4,000 by the end of the year. And next year, it could be 8000 It could be 10000 Okay? So we'll see. Right now, it is looking good that that $400 or $500 I invest in the, the series could be something in the three to $4,000 range by Christmas. That does not mean that's all, that's all the profit that I made this year on the comic books. Like I said, I show you a fraction of what I'm doing. So, you know, but to keep it real, to keep it so that, you know, it, it illustrate clearly that it can be done. I specifically kept all of the money specifically for those specific books in that specific series instead of like commingle all the money that I made uh, with all the other books. You know, so it can be done. Aha, uh -huh. Omega Comics, welcome uh, for joining us here. And yes, Omega Comics himself is doing the same thing and he's growing his pot very well. Comic Addiction, I had a book press uh, let me see. Something. Sometimes my screen doesn't show all the text. I had a book press, but if the smudge could not be taken out, should I get CGC clean the book? Um. Depend on who your press and cleaners are. Okay. If if you send to a professional that clean and press and charge your money for it, hopefully he or she know what they are doing and can clean out the smudge. As I mentioned, not all smudge or fingerprints or things can be clean. Okay, be very um, clear. I'm, I'm trying to be as clear as I can because a lot of time, you know, people say, oh, I have smudge. And then I, I will tell the person, it depends on how the smudge happened. Much like the fingerprints issue that I made a video and load this week. If the smudge, okay, if you go and watch the video, and if you haven't, 
my da- my daredevil 131 had a nasty fingerprint imprinted on the cover because it was my theory is that the fingerprint was put there when the ink was still wet so there's no way to remove it same thing with a smudge imagine if the person that put his finger on the book when the ink is still wet and put the finger print there what happened if he run his fingerprint his finger this way and put a smudge on it there is no way to clean it that smudge is there permanently okay it's not a smudge from something else that happened after production long after if you have a, a smudge that happened after if you take a book if you take a, 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 a bronze book right now okay and if you have moist fingers or greasy finger and you press hard on the cover and swipe it across I guarantee you see a little smudge okay that depend on how the cleaner uh, how good the cleaner can be some of that can be cleaned off because it's something that happened recently it can be done it won't be completely gone because once a smudge happened is in the situation I just described you are you have removed and smear some ink off the cover all right so it's not gonna be restore completely to the condition <clears throat> that it was before that event Mike Jeter Wow, Mike Gito is uh, has worked for CGC for ten years. Wow, hello, Mike Cheater. Um, I guess you won't be sticking around. <laughs> but hey, we have Mike Cheater, uh, employee. I'm not sure if he's still working at at, at uh, CGC or not, but he's here and welcome to the chat. Uh, yeah. Um, for those that are not aware, I did interview to work for CGC many, many years ago. Yes, I did. At one time, uh, I considered working for CGC and applied to work for CGC as a grader. Uh, I have told this many times, but I think, you know, the way YouTube is, you know, people that are new to the channel, they don't go back and watch what I said three years ago or four years ago or five years ago so what I said might be news for people but yeah back in uh, oh gosh I forgot what year it was I did apply uh, for a greater job at CGC and I interview and uh, right at the end of the interview before uh, they decided if I would be a good fit, if I want the job, right at the end of the interview, I said, listen, guys, I decided that I'm not a good fit here. Okay, so my apology for wasting time, my apology for picking up your time, I appreciate the opportunities, but I don't think I am a good fit. Hiring me, will not solve your problem hiring me will not fix what you need which what you're looking for at the time they were looking for you know of course ccc looking for more graders right they, they're busy as heck um i interviewed when my son was very young was a he's you know baby and at that time, I already decided to walk away from my business. I had enough, okay? This is not, not recently, but I already decided that, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I make enough money with my business. I'm not 50 yet, but I make enough money that I can walk away uh, to do something else. And maybe being a CGC grader was something that I would consider, right? And I, I went there, I interviewed for those that, you know, the interview process is nothing hard. They, they, they talk to me, they ask me about, you know, all 
question about how long I have been in the hobby, how long I have collected comic books. Um, and then they gave me a stack of books, a big stack. Well, not a big stack, but maybe I would say a dozen books in all kind of different condition. And they said, go ahead and grade it. So they, they, they sat in front of me. The, uh, there was a, a, a grader. Um, he still works for CGC today. I still see pictures of him here and there or on YouTube videos or on various videos. So he's still a grader, a head grader at CGC. But um, they hand me the stack and one by one, you know, he watched me go through the books, like flip through all the page, count the page, and then I give my reasoning why this book is this great. Uh, one of the books had a missing coupon, so I give the reason why this book would be, you know, could be in a green label. Uh, but so I went through the whole stack of, of books in front of them, and he seemed very pleased. You know, he uh, he write down some, my my comments on why I grade certain things. Um, but at the end of that whole process, I was there for maybe an hour between the interview, between a couple of different uh, CCC graders, maybe 45 minutes. It was under one hour. But at the end of the interview, I said, listen, you're looking for someone that will, that are willing to travel to a convention, to work 50, 60 hours a week. Right now, for the past few years, I don't even work 20 hours a week. Yeah. I was I was very blunt. I'm like, I'm working 10, 20 hours a week. And I'm certain. I am certain. I make more money than you. <laughs> so uh, whatever pay that you are willing to offer me is, is, is a step down from what I'm making on top of having to work three times as hard. Um, I love this hobby, but I don't turn it, I don't, I don't want to hate this hobby because what you expect me to do, for those that you don't know, if you work for CGC as a grader, you better man up and grade about 300 books a day. Okay, how many people here can grade 300 books a week? let alone 300 a day. Do you know how, how much you would hate this hobby if you had to sit there for 10 hours a day and flip through 30 books an hour? Yeah. And, and, and I told him, I'm not going to go to 25 conventions a year. F no, okay? I said, outside of the own of CGC, I make more money than all of you, so... No, this job is not for me, to be blunt. <laughs> I don't know why I even went for the interview. I knew about this already. I knew a lot of what they expected. That's why, you know, at the end of the interview, I'm like, I'm the wrong guy. Hiring me will not solve your problem. If you're looking for someone that can work 50, 60 hours a week with traveling, and here I am sitting here telling you, I'm not working more than 20 hours a week. Why would you hire me? Why would anyone hire me? Does that make any sense? So it was a mutual understanding at the end of the interview that I am going to get my butt back to my car and drive home. And they're not going to waste time evaluating if I can be a grader or not. I have spoken to other people after the facts. And they told me that they would have hired me. I had the skills. They would have hired me, but I was right to turn down the chance to work there because they need a lot of full-time workers, not just somebody that want to do this on a part-time basis because it makes no sense. So yeah, that's what happened. So that's my experience with CGC. Uh, Mike Gita said 300 a day. What about on-site grading? I don't know. Uh, I can just tell you that, you know, based on my um, understanding, I, I used to hang out with a lot of graders. 
uh, when um, Steve Barack was still living in Sarasota before he moved to Texas. He and I went to lunch many, many times. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know wh what the expectation is. I just know that, you know, on the average, that's what they told me was, you know, they had to churn out like 300 books a day. That's a lot of work. And sorry, but I'm, you can't pay me enough to grade 300 books a day. Yeah, I mean, it, it's insane. It's it's uh, it, it's mind-boggling. Okay, it's it's it's. Uh, whenever I hear people complain about CGC flaws as far as they miss a grade, they, they disagree. Hey, I do that too. You hear me complain from time to time on my channel that I disagree with a grade here and there. It happens. But a lot of people don't understand what it is like to grade 300 books or more a day. Trust me, if you make a mistake here and there, it will happen. It can happen. It did happen. And we are human. We are so human. And anyone that sits at home and whines about, oh, I hate CGC because this and that, Try to grade 30 books a day and see if you can even do that before you complain about somebody that get paid to do 300 a day, six days a week. Yeah, it's, it's mind boggling. So I understand. I understand how difficult it is. I can't do it. Okay. Just because I have the skills to grade and I can grade correctly or fairly, there is no way that I can handle that kind of workload. No way. It would destroy this hobby for me. I would hate this hobby after a couple of weeks. You know, when my, my best advice to those that had a bad experience with CGC, and I have had my share of things that I disagree with, you know, as with anything in life, pick up the phone and try to be nice. Talk to somebody and see if they can resolve it for you. The, the last thing, the last thing that anybody should do if they get something that they think is a mistake is make a YouTube video and go on full blast on social media because that's a cool thing to do. Uh, try not to get a knee-jerk reaction, um, try to think a little bit, step on the brake before you go crazy on social media like somebody did something wrong. It's tough, you know, it's tough. I have had, I can tell you this, I have had books that I sent to CGC and I'm pretty good at grading, I'm pretty good at handling my books. I have had books that I thought was 9.8 that I sent to CGC and I got it back and it got a 9.2. And I can see it through the slab that the cover had a big like thumb crease, uh, like some bad handling. It happens. I was mad. I was disappointed. But you know what I did? Instead of like making a video on YouTube to show the flaws and to tell people that, oh, CGC f up my book. You know what I did? I cracked the book out. I press it. I resubmit. I got a 9-8 and a story. Um, you know, it, it's, that, but that's how I handle things, okay? I try, I understand. I, I run a business. I run a business. I can tell you, um, the last eight weeks has been extremely tough on my staff because they handle some crazy project. I get emails from them at midnight, at 2 a.m., at 3 a.m., because they are working their asses off, you know? And they make mistakes, a whole bunch of them. And, you know, I step up and defended them to the clients because I'm just like, hey, 
you guys asked us to do crazy things on crazy deadline. <clears throat> we did the best we could. And we made some mistake. My apology. We fix it for free. Move on. And I told my staff, no, it, 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 they, they, my staff are really cool. They apologize to me. They're like, oh, Nick, we're so sorry. You know, boss, I'm, we, we are so sorry. We missed that. I'm just like, you guys were working to 2 or 3 a.m. <clears throat> it is what it is. You know, we, we had, you, you had to get it done and you did it. There was two or three little mistakes. I fixed it. It's okay. Hey, you know, they were happy. My staff, I pay my staff very well. Uh, I can tell you, you know, it, it's, uh, I'm a good boss. I'm a fair boss. Uh, Bianchi asked me, uh, I just looked at the clock, it's 10.54, so I got about 10 more minutes to go. Is there any established deal out there that I would, uh, well, tight grading dealers? I will tell you this. Uh, Bob from High Grade Comics, he's very tight graders. Fair, but I wouldn't say that, you know, but when I say dealers and tight grading, often to me it's spot on. It's not like, you know, oh, you know, they, they're grading something as a 9.0 and they come back as a 9.4. Uh, that's not, that's what I'm, not what I'm saying. You know, I have bought a few books from Bob over the years raw and submit them and got back exactly the grade that he said they were. You know, so um, another one that I think is right up there as far as being spot on is Quality Comics, uh, Brent. For those that are not familiar, but I think Brent over at Quality Comics, he grade pretty tight. Uh, I rarely complain that he's great. I mean, I had bought from him on and off for the past 10 years. Not every book that I bought I thought was graded correctly as far as being spot on. I think I can count maybe one or two books probably two books that I disagree. After I get the book back, I'm like, ah, it's maybe one level lower than what he said, but I'm not going to return it um, because the price was fair. But overall, I, I, I was pretty happy with the majority of my purchase with quality comics, with high-grade comics. Um, yes, quality is in Alabama. Hello, Felix. Uh, yes, uh, Christopher Joy, show respect and handle things professionally. Uh, absolutely. Um, and, you know, and even I um, can be negative. For those that remember, um, last month I had a bad experience on eBay and I made a video. You notice I took the video down real quick after the seller agreed to take the return and apologize that he was wrong and I was not some kind of scammer that switched books and returned on him. He made the mistake. And I took it down. You know, I, I, If I leave that video up, I guarantee you that video will get thousands more views because that's how this world is. Okay, We are living in a world where people love negativity. People love to jump on the bandwagon of bashing somebody. And you know, I had a bad experience on eBay. I post a video on being accused by a seller that I, I switched books and returning books and forced him to take a return, but it was his mistakes. And after he took the return and sent me an email apologizing that he made the mistakes, I took down the video real quick. There is no need to keep that up there. Um, uh, Reese is uh, okay as well. Uh, I... I have not bought anything from Greg Reese in a long time because he sells mostly um, slabs, okay? But he's reasonable as far as negotiating a price. If, if, if I see a book on his site um, and I want to offer a reasonable price, he's reasonable. Uh, now, high-grade comics, that's a different story, okay? You got to understand high-grade comics, Bob, 
not everything on his site is his book. There are people that consign books to sell on high grade comics website. So if you have a seller that is unreasonable, then whatever offer you put out there might not work. Okay, so it has happened. So, you know, hey, I consign things on high grade comics website. I have been told I am unreasonable as far as a seller is concerned, but yeah, it happens. Sometimes I can be very tough on a book, and sometimes I have, I have books that that sit on Bob's website for years under GPA, and nobody buys it. So, you know, it's it's all about the audience, right? You know, not everybody is aware of high grade comics. So, same thing with quality comics. You know, a lot of these dealers are not nationally known. So it's it's not like you know, that's why I I I have stopped consigning books to Bob, not because he can't get me good price, but I'm just not that patient to consign a book and let it sit there for three years, especially when the asking price is below GPA. I'm just like I just might as well just put it on Comic Link and auction it off because obviously his customers. Do not care about that book. Mike Jeter, my God, you also work for Bob. Nice guy, very fair. Yeah, Bob is very fair. I, 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 like I say, Bob is not the friendliest of people, right? Uh, but uh, he's fair, and uh, and I have sold a lot of books. Through Bob, uh, until last year. Last year was the first year that I cut back, um, consigning books with Bob, and just auction them off at Comic Link. I've been doing a lot with Comic Link the past year and a half. Good luck, Omega Comics. Thank you for joining me. Well, Mike Jeters, I'm glad you stuck around. Uh, I hope you pop in in the future. Um, it's not every day that I have an uh, employee at CGC popped in um, to say hi. You know, I mean, I wish I can say hi to the people that work at CGC more often because I go there like once a month, Mike. I go there once a month. In fact, I was there last week to drop off a batch. Uh, so you know it's it's uh, it's hard work. I I I appreciate the, the the kind of work that goes in and not easy. Not something that this guy can do. You know I uh, I have been using CGC now. Like I said, for over ten years, I have submitted probably two thousand books by now. You know by my count, it's it's a lot. So been there, done that. Certainly have made my share a profit of selling CGC slaps. So I, hey, I'm not gonna bite the hand that fed me. <laughs> sure, Mike. Uh, you know my email address is etanick at gmail dot com. Feel free to contact me if you ever want to meet up for lunch. We can do it. I, um, like I said. I'm always open to meet people locally to chat and have coffee and have lunch and uh, talk comics. Hello, Scott is here. As always, Scott, you're late to the show. I'm about to sign off in the next two or three minutes, and time for me to get ready for my Sunday brunch. Little like French toast and bacon and eggs. You know me, I love. It's the meal I look forward to cook every Sunday. It's my favorite meal. I told my son. My son is shocked that I say that every every week. I'm like, bacon and eggs and French toast and pancakes and hash brown. Oh my god! <laughs> it's like I literally can eat that every day. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good to do that every day, but once a week is not a bad thing. You know. You know my approach to life: moderation. Two strip of bacon a week is not gonna kill me. 
you know, I'm not, I'm not the kind that eat bacon every day. I know it's not good for you. Yes, Mike, go ahead. Email me, uh, contact me, and uh, hopefully we can meet up and hang out and chat. You know, it's, it's, it's a good thing. Like I said, I, I miss having Steve Barack around uh, now that he's gone. I miss those lunch with him as well as other graders. We used to meet right over here at the mall by that uh, deli. Uh, anyhow, uh, time for me to go. Uh, I just look at the clock. It's it's been long enough, and thank you everybody for joining me. Hopefully, what I said today uh, was on point as far as sell on the news. Okay, that's the main topic today was sell on the news. If you are new to sell on the news, learn about it, apply it. Do not hold on to something when the news is out. Okay, if you decide to hold on to something when the news is out. It's old news, okay? So sell on the news. Use it. Apply it. Profit from it. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Enjoy your Sunday. Enjoy your football Sunday. Bye-bye.